Oh, welcome to another edition of uh, Winning Ways. Uh, no, you haven't. Uh, you don't have to add any water to your evening libation. Um, Goodman and, and Lafferty are down in Australia, uh, covering the Magic Million sales in, in, in Adelaide. Uh, Laff mumbled something about kangaroos and, and sheep. No, it wasn't sheep. No, Sheila's. Sorry, Sheila's. Sheila's. Um, with me this, e this morning is, well, be this evening today, is, is Warren Inferno. Uh, welcome, Warren. Welcome to the show. Hello, Andrew. It's, uh, again, just the two of us. Just the two of us, yeah, like in the podcast with the, with the racing app. Yeah, yeah no, this, no, this time we were on TV, though. Yeah, no, normally we're doing the podcast for the SA Racing app. We, they can't see our mugs, but today they can see our mugs. Yeah, yeah I no, don't no, know. No. Will there, there'll be a debate whether who, who's the better looking, you and me and, or Laff and, and Goodman. I think we're both ugly. <laughs> okay, let's go straight into the show and we have our three to follow. Dad distorted humor. He's probably one of his best sons instead. All have another wins the derby. All have another in the Lilacs and lace, 48 to one upset. He's just a big, strong, leggy horse. Right, so the first race we have for you, the Stormberg Stakes, uh, run at Turfentain over a thousand meters. Um, it's one of the, the first listed features, juveniles of the, of the, of the season, so it usually gives you a, a good uh, intro into, into the, the rest of the season. So let's see how we go. We, first up is uh, Icasa, Gavin Vanzale's runner. It's drawn, it's drawn four. And there they go. Gets a smart break, Andrew. Jumps out of the gates quite well, and within a stride or two is, you know, right up there with him. Yeah, he looks like quite a, a, a forward colt, and I think he's, you know, if you watch the race, he's turning into a really nice horse, but he could turn into a nice horse. Yeah, Gavin Finzel's got some nice horses. They're doing well up in Gauteng. Uh, both yards, the Gauteng yard and the Quasin and Natal yard, doing very well. Yeah, Samanga has him up there uh, nicely. He's up with the pace. There's Magox Master in the, in the orange, going very quickly. Um, but he's right there, not pushing, he's just settling nicely. And then you'll see Desamunga goes at the 400, kicks away. Yeah, certainly the, 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 the sticks have come out on the other ones and Samunga's just, as you say, punching him away and uh, really eventually draws off to win a very good race. Yeah, and he's still very, very green. If he's all over the race course, every time he gets a tap down the neck, he goes the opposite direction. So yeah, I think there's a lot to improvement to come. And I presume the SA Nursery will be up next. Yeah, very much so. We must talk about the second horse from the Johan Janssen von Feeren yard with Donovan Mansur in the saddle. Brazuka ran a very good race in second, but no doubt the winner is a horse to follow. And right from there, we go onto the Ruffian Stakes for two-year-old fillies. Uh, and here we have Intazar, Mike, uh, Mike de Kock and Anthony Delpesh. Mike won this race last year with Majmu. Yeah, that's interesting. Majmu, the same race that it was last year. Same, same race, same colours. Same same colours. colours. And it was also grey. <laughs> Got a bit of a squeeze at the start. Yeah, not that well away, but recovered fairly quickly. And there's uh, always Cornet Spices runners. They always show a lot of pace, so they're, they're in front. Uh, and there's Anthony just, just tracking. Sitting, yeah. in, sitting in the pocket. You know, the, other, the front ones were out and gone and sort of Anthony just starts to niggle a little bit now to get, to get her into the race and uh, she responded well. She responded really nicely and uh, to turn into a bit of a tussle the last bit um, as Speedy Susie, well she's well named going that, that speed and uh, well, but eventually, the, yeah. Yeah, she, uh, the two of them come together, you know, Intazar now comes up to Speedy Susie, they have a bit of a fight on their hands for a couple of strides, but Entezar eventually draws away to yeah. win most convincingly. And interesting, Entezar is also by more than ready. I think Majimu is also by more than ready. Yes, so, uh, if yeah, I'm not mistaken. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. so we're looking forward to the, the SA, SA Nursery and the SA Phillies Nursery. I think those two runners will be right up there. And from there we moved to Gravel on, uh, yesterday, the second race, and um, we had a first timer from the Corrin and Greg Anthony Stable, Wild Namakwa. Uh, she showed a good pace. And I think we watch now, she shouldn't drawn be too two. long in winning. She's drawn two. 
The eventual winner is Burnt Orange, drawn 13. So it's that's quite interesting it, uh, that that you can win from 13 in gravel run in a sprint. So that all goes well for the season too. Yeah. There's Wild yeah, Namakwa off to the front. Yeah, and the, the Sukraj colours out to the front. Brandon Arena took uh, took him out to the front and ran a good race. Yeah, and the, the, the winners three from the back. Um, Burnt Orange, Wild Namakwa had, had a treble on the day, but uh, Wild Namakwa was out and gone. We'll talk, we'll, we'll talk about why I'm mowing a bit later on because he sent out three runners to, to Gravel yesterday and, and all three won with Anthony Del Pesce in the saddle. So that was a great day so for the mowing office. stables. There's Wild Namakwa kicks away from the top of the straight and there's the winner right on the outside. On, on the, on the, uh, yeah, I still the had a lot of ground to make up and really ate up the turf on the outside. Another horse in the race that ran third, Andrew, is, is Entree, who seems to be very disappointing. Just can't seem to just, get into just, the winner's enclosure. He just doesn't seem to kick on. Now there's Wild Namakwa staying on, staying on, staying, but just the line came just too, too late and uh, got caught by Burnt Orange. Yeah, that's definitely one that we can follow, Burn, uh, and Wild Namakwa from the Greg and Car and Anthony stable. And right from there, we go on to, uh, from there we go on to Blast from the Past. Um, yeah, we were taking a bit of time to get to the next section. Uh, why are mooring? You know, had three winners. Yeah, three Delpeche. winners. And, I mean, you know, it's not. It's hard to send. You know, you send three runners to the to the track. All three of them win. Not easy. But kudos to uh, his assistant, who's uh, Amy, based at Ashburton, and congratulations to them. And, and Anthony Delpesh riding at the top of his top game. Of his game. Yeah. You know, since Why has moved to Ashburton, the, the, the strings really come well. Yeah. Uh, he told me he said he loves Ashburton because it's 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 not crowded and the tracks are good. And he's going to have a lot of winners. Yeah. Well, the Ashburton, uh, very underrated training centre. Yep. Open. Soft falling rain, pulling clear. Soft falling rain, won the SA Nursery by three. Racing. Racing in the 2000 guineas. It's fly and they're racing in the Godolphin Mile. They're off and racing. Weight didn't matter. Class tells. Soft falling rain, much too good. Soft falling rain, an impressive guineas winner. Soft falling rain is drawing clear. He's made it seven out of seven by winning here today. But it's soft falling rain who is powering away. We'll see out the mile in style. A high class performer wins the day of Joel Stakes. Preview going in with the red colours. Three from that inside rail. They're all set now. 1400 cents on their way. Quick Grit was slow to begin, lost about a length, but Lap Cryer at the rail came out well. Three to run on the far side. Special preview being relegated into third. Bluff is on the far side of that one. Then it's Prince of War racing about five lengths off the leader in the white colours. One and a half lengths back there on their inside is Yeltsin, Alderizi in behind that. Then Quick Grit second last, and London Mist is the trailer. As they go now to the 800 metre marker, that's free to run in front. Free to run the leader by three. Lacra is second. Bluff is third. Special preview is the one next to the rail in the red colours. Now Prince of War in the white colours has gone past him. And Prince of War gets up fourth now. Four and a half off them. A length and a half to Alderiza in behind those. Being followed by Yeltsin. Quick width in behind that. And then London Mist. They come now to the 500 metre marker. It's free to run. The one in front, the leader by three. Prince of War has made an early move for home now. Prince of War gets up second in the white and special preview now. Asta Chase got about three lengths to make up. Then Lacra, 300 to go. Prince of War, special preview switches out. And here's special preview coming on now, about 250 to go. Prince of War in the white colours and special preview straight and now call for the stick. Special preview hanging to the inside. Alderiza flying at late between them and Prince of War at the rail. Special preview, Alderiza does the wire. Alderiza got up in the last ride. Alderiza, I would say, won it from Special Preview, who is hanging back. Jeez, Warren, that was a hell of a finisher. Jeez. Yeah, I, I haven't seen a race like that for a long time. The 95 Keith Hepburn stakes 
and El Riza just to sneak through like that and get up on the line. Yeah. Do you remember who rode El I don't, I don't know, remember it was who. Trained by Herman I, Brown. Yeah, and I think Kid Colt, Etienne van der Westhuizen had a share, didn't he? Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's I think it, Kid Kid Colt had a yeah. share, Etienne van der Westhuizen. And special preview, uh, Joey Soma, who, yeah. who won the um, the Gilbies at the, yeah, the, the time he, there, and, and also it. Prince of War is a very good horse, trained by Dean Maroon. Yeah, that's right. But yeah. uh, the Soma horse special preview, he was very good. Yeah, that was uh, a hell of a finish. Jeez, what a finish! I tell you, to to get through and get up on the line like that was unbelievable. Nice to see those those old races. Right. Okay, from there we'll go on to Plum of the Week. of 350. Saint Donan in front trying to make each and every call a winning one. He's kicked away to lead by two. Charlie Strong on the chase. Then we find Silver Snaffles towards the inside. Ravishing lad up the outside. 150 metres left to go. Saint Donan is a useful leader coming into the closing stages and he's finally going to get it right today. Saint Donan is coming home to win the first of the afternoon from Charlie Strong, Silver Snaffles, Ravishing lad and then came Beaufort Sea. Well, that was the plum of the week there um, with St. Dunan. He looked the right horse. He'd been a, unlucky a, a few times there. On Interbet, you could have got 22 to 10. Uh, eventually started 13 to 10, so I think it was a, a real plum if you got on. And next up, we're on to current, current affairs. We go to Dubai, and then we will go into some local news. Right, first up is Super Saturday at Maidan, where uh, Mike de Kock had, a, had a, a whole host of runners, but it wasn't such a, a day that we expected. Um, we, he, uh, the first one worked out very well. Um, did you see any of the races, Warren? Yeah, I did. Uh, I, was tra I was actually went up to Peter Maritzburg uh, on Saturday afternoon, and I didn't see the earlier races, but I saw Via Africa and the ones after that. Um, right. Great racing, you know. It's yeah. just a, to see such magnificent horses in action is unbelievable. Well, let's go to the first race. It's the Al Bastikia at Maiden, where, where Mike had a, a really good winner here. Well, De Hidge is in. Signals are given. Gates are back, and they're racing at the El Bastakir and Adj Wad from the inside had to be hustled shortly after the break. Mugta Hidge began well, Sir Fever well away, and he's going forward. Tash B is fourth, quarterback is fifth, Intensa went to the fence, and he's last of all. Adj Wad picked up the bit, and on the turn out of the straight, going past the 1600 metres mark, Adj Wad scoots away with a break of a length and a half. Sir Fever is second with Mugta Hidge, a length and a half away running third. Three parts of a length to Tash B, three quarters of a length to Intensa, and quarterback is three quarters of a length away. Last of all, as they go into the back straight, leaving the first 400 metres behind in 25.7. Adjwad, three parts in front. Sir Fever's second. He's striding up on the outside, getting closer. Walk to Hedge is two lengths away. He's running third. Tash B, three quarters of a length away, fourth, and kept wide and out of the kickback. Quarterback is being ridden along, and so is Intensa, who's last of the six as they travel onto the top bend. Adjwad ran 800 
100 metres in 49.6. Out of the back straight, he's ahead in front. Sir Fever is second with Mubta Hedge, a length and a half away third, a length and a half to Tash B, a break to quarterback and Intensa had dropped out to the rear as Sir Fever now moves alongside Adjwad, who's under pressure coming onto the bend at the 500 metres mark. Sir Fever, the Uruguayan champion, turns in front. Mubta Hedge butt is immediately there to pounce. Sir Fever is under pressure. Mubta Hedge went straight to him, went straight past him. Mubta Hitch took the lead at the 250. He's two lengths in front of Sir Fever. A long break to Edgewad, but Mubta Hitch in front. Here's the 100 metres mark. He's two and a half lengths clear. Sir Fever not giving up, but Mubta Hitch has his measure. And Mubta Hitch is too good. Mubta Hitch wins the Elbasta Kia and wins it well from Sir Fever. Warren, that was a really, really impressive performance by Mubta Hitch because the, the second horse, Sir, Sir Fever, had won, was Uruguayan champion, won 10 races on, on the trot on the dirt, and I thought he was unbeatable. But Mubta Hitch went past him like he was standing still. Standing still. I thought a very good ride from Dane O'Neill. He did very well. Uh, the rest of the field was strung out like Monday morning washing. But uh, no, Mubta Hitch certainly caught the eye there. One thing about Dubai racing is they don't hang around. They, from the gate, no, there's go always a good pace. Yeah, yeah, there's always a good pace. Yeah, so not you, for the faint hearted. You've got to be fit there. Yeah, absolutely. Right, from there we go on to the Maidan Sprint where we had Via Africa, the much anticipated debut in, in, in Dubai. Um, she wasn't disgraced, ran a, ran a good race after a 10 month break. Uh, let's see how she went. Gates are back, and Caspian Prince and High on Life from the inside began well. Extortionist out wide, not fast away. R2 began quickly, and Via Africa is showing pace as Caspian Prince burns to the lead from High on Life via Africa. Casper Necha, Refuge, not far away from Lancelot de Lac, Sir Maximilian. R2 on the outside of those. Fit Yarns on the far side. Refuge midfield, so is Banadia. Movie star and line of reason getting well back. And company with Mishua Joe, Soul Power, Roy de Vitesse and Extortionist is last. Caspian Prince has headed to the outside rail with 300 metres left to go in front of R2, Glancelot de Lac and Casper Natcher down the centre of the track. R2 coming after Caspian Prince. Caspian Prince on the rail, tackled by R2 and Casper Natcher. Casper Natcher in the middle, Sir Maximilian flying, coming from everywhere. Max got there, Sir Maximilian ahead in front of R2 that was a pretty good run from from via africa don't you think i mean she hadn't run for 10 months so she may have been a bit ring rusty she showed plenty of pace yeah. and just when i thought she was going to toss in the towel she just kept on finding she yeah. finished well, just behind i was reading on the website this morning that uh, mike was quite happy with the run that the fact that she showed early pace and where it looked like she was going to go out the back door she fought right back yeah no, that's, uh, what, that's what impressed very good run time. and yeah. you know obviously andre Hauptflesch, who, who owns has a share in in via africa's been on the abc and been on the on the sms's and you know they're very happy with the run and you know they're expecting her to come on a ton from this effort yeah i presume she'll run on on um on the big night of yeah. Dubai and, World and, Cup. And night again, Mark yeah. de Kock said on, on the website this morning that he certainly feels that she, she can run in the first four. Well, I hope so, because yeah, for us, it'll be, it'll be great for Via Africa. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And from there, we cut to the Jabal Hatta, where Versen Getterix was uh, out to defend his title. Uh, but it proved a bit of a disaster race for, for the de Kock runners. Uh, finished, they finished third, fourth and or third and fourth, but Versen Getterix just failed to fire. Run. Gates fly and they're off in the Jebel Hatter and Johann Strauss calling out and Trade Storm were all slow to move, immediately dropped back to the tail of the field. Anna Arobio came out quickly, San Shawes began fast and moves to second. Hunter's Light third, flying the flag fourth, Lamario fifth and three deep. Johann Strauss drives up along the inside of stable companion Versin Gitterix. Two and a half lengths to Darwin, three quarters to Mr. Pomeroy, a half length to calling out. El Lavelle is second last and Trade Storm had dropped back to the tail of the field. Anna Arobio the leader, leaving 400 behind in 26.4 and running towards the back bend, he showed the way by a touch more than a length. 
and Shawwez second, Hunter's Light third. Lamario's a length away, running fourth, and then Wanda flying the flag. Another length to Versin Gitterix, three quarters of a length to Johann Strauss. Two lengths to Darwin on the outside of Calling Out. Mr. Pomeroy's travelling wide, El Lavelle's well back, and Trade Storm on the inside whipped them in. Anna Arobio coming down onto the turn with 650 to run, and 800 gone in 49.6, leads by a length over San Shawwez. Hunter's Light had all the room in the world to come off the rail, and he's about to stake his claim. Versin Getterex will give him three length start into the home straight. Then Lamario and Johann Strauss. Hunter's Light has gone for home past Anna Arobio. Versin Getterex will want to get a move on. Johann Strauss on the outside is making ground, but Hunter's Light set bye bye. And the Jebel Hunter belongs to Godolph. Hunter's Light storming away is going to be a very big winner. Hunter's Light first, Johann Strauss and the fast finishing trade storm and a bob of the heads for second and third. Flying the flags run for St. Shawwez fifth. Uh, yeah, that was a bit disappointing one versus Gitterix, but I believe he, he went wrong in the race, so uh, you can draw a line through that. But the, the, the winner, Hunter's Light, was, was a very, very easy winner. Uh, Jeez, no. I tell you, I, it really doddled up, didn't it? It was a good win. I find it strange also in Dubai, you find those horses, they just you get one horse and it just shoots clear and wins by miles. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not too many close finishes there. But um, De Cox's one is not bad. Johan, jo Johan Strauss, as the yeah, commentator Johann says. Yeah, it's nice to hear that violent. accent. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 yeah. jo Johan Strauss and flying the flag, not, not disgraced. No, not disgraced. Good no, runs, but yeah. uh, Hunter's Light certainly looked uh, way too good. Way too good for this field. Okay, Warren, let's go into a bit of news. Um, Callan Murray, apprentice Callan Murray, is moving up to Gauteng. Uh, it was his last meeting at Gravel on yesterday. Uh, Another good good appy disappearing from, from the locals. Yeah, you know, I think they all sort of chomp at the bit to go up to, to Gauteng. You know, they race Kimberley on a Monday, they race Val twice a week, Turf and Tain. So there's a lot more opportunities for them. And I think once they finish their schooling here in, in KwaZulu-Natal, it sort of makes sense for them to go up to Gauteng. They, they get more meetings to, to ride at and get more experience. But uh, KwaZulu-Natal will miss Callan. Yeah. Because he's a likable youngster and a good rider. A good rider. Yeah, I suppose you, they get much more opportunity up there. So, and, and the competition from four rides is probably a little bit easier. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now we and can only wish him the best. We can wish him the best. And also uh, moving out is, is Brandon Lorena. He heads off to Mauritius next Monday. Yeah, he, he's. Uh, I had a, we did a little chat with him, you know, for the newspaper. We pop, popped a little piece in the newspaper about Brandon's move to, to Mauritius. And he said Ricky Mangard uh, approached him. Uh, and offered him the job, a nine-month contract. Uh, and Brandon, obviously, just come back from a, a bit of a, a ankle injury. Uh, he seems to be well on the mend, and uh, he leaves, I think, next Monday, him and his family to, to Mauritius. Yeah, Mauritius. Yeah, well, I hope they can, uh, have all the luck there. But uh, I believe Mauritius Racing is a bit of turmoil at the moment, and they're not quite sure when it's even going to start. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, well, chatting to a couple of the Mauritians, they tell us that they haven't, the, the local government haven't given them their program of events yet so they don't quite know when the first race meeting will take place that'll be interesting though we'll keep we'll keep tabs on that and we so we go um coming up is the champion season and uh graham hawkins gold circles marketing and racing man uh, executive has come up with two nice new concepts the one first one is the 2020 do you know much about it yeah the 2020 i think is a great initiative from gold circle uh, andrew you know it's what they're going to be doing is, is they're going to be run a set of set of races from 20 minutes apart. Obviously, they'll run a race at, at each 20 minute intervals. The first race will be run by and it will be apprentices only. The second race will be jockeys only, and and so they'll rotate. So it'll be one race for appies only, one race for jockeys only at 20 minute intervals. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how it goes. I know because most people think you delay the races, you get more money on the tote, but. Uh opposite it might be even better because people will get on and, yes. and the races are quicker and yeah. and yeah the t turnover might pick up yeah. so but it's an interesting concept yeah. it's going to be an action-packed race meeting you know the racing will be coming at you thick and fast uh, at every 20 minute intervals you have to get your bets on quickly uh, watch the races the saddle the, the trainers will have to saddle up their runners quickly as well and the jocks and, and appies get the uh, a's into g's and uh, it'll be a nice evening's racing. I think it's a very good initiative. Yeah, it should be. I think it'll be good fun. And next up is the Ryder Cup. Uh, Ryder with an I. Very Stop cleverly named. I. I think very cleverly very named. Clever. Graham came up with that. Graham came up with that name. Very yeah. cleverly named the Ryder Cup with an I. 
Yeah, that, that'll be an interprovincial. Uh, hopefully we're getting four riders, four from KZN, four from Gauteng, and four from the Western Cape. Yeah. Um, Scottsville used to have the interprovincial. That was their uh, brainchild, I remember. Uh, Gavin Brown and John Wingfield, they came up with that. And it was always a very successful day. I mean, the whole of Marisburg turned out. And it was, so I think it's uh, an initiative to bring it back. It should get people to the course to see their heroes. And we just hope we get uh, good fields. Good, tenant. And a good, good fields and a good turnout. Obviously, that's what the people want to see. They want to see the good horses. They want to see the good riders. And South Africa's really got some talented riders. So I think, again, for Gold Circle to get all those top riders in, in, into one centre at one race meeting, I think it should really fill the grandstands. Yeah, I think that's about all we've got, uh, Warren, for, for your call, so, uh, for current affairs. So we'll cross over to your call where we've got Paul Lafferty and James Goodman on the line. They had to get their oar in, didn't they? They had to, absolutely. They couldn't, uh, couldn't, leave, this, they couldn't leave us just to do our, do our bit. They had to, to get involved. But now we'll talk to them shortly. Warren Fern has done a runner, uh, and with me in the studio is, is Graham Hawkins. Graham's here to talk about the, the champion season. Welcome, Graham. Thank you, Andrew. This is unique. This is unique. Yeah, we're back to front. Yes, you, you, you're the one I don't know the how Paul and James deserve the life they get uh, traveling around the world. Uh, well, what they do to, to get all those kind of rewards is fantastic. You know, and every time they do a runner, we have to pick up the pieces. <laughs> so. uh, Graham, yes. Um, a few things we need to clear up about champion season. You wanted to talk about the programming on the poly track. Yeah, Andrew, I just wanted to get the message out here. There's a lot of talk about the program, how much turf racing we have, uh, how much poly track racing we have going forward. And I just wanted to make the point very clearly uh, to all who care to listen that, uh, you know, the, the poly track is not an in-case track. It's not there to service the industry just when it rains. Uh, we, we stage about 108 race meetings annually um, in Gold Circle country. Uh, that was always the case even when we had Clarewood. Uh, but obviously now that we've just got Gravel with its two tracks and Scottsville with its two tracks, bearing in mind that we have the inner and the stand side track, um, about half of those races annually are going to be run on the poly track. So clearly if there are owners and trainers out there who are not going to fully embrace the poly track, it's going to be difficult for them to place their horses and get runs. So, uh, I, I really just want, uh, you know, from a programming point of view, Jay is responsible. Jay Harrell is responsible for putting that program together. We don't run two separate programs. Right. It's not to say that, uh, you know, just using an example, if, a, if there's a maiden 1600 for fillies on the grass, that there's going to be one on the poly track uh, run at the same time, you know. So you may have to go from grass to poly track, back to grass, etc if you're going to want to get the opportunity, say, every three weeks. Right, it's right. complicated, obviously, also by the fact that Scottsville is closed at the moment, and, and also in the new year when we do the spring treatment, it'll be closed. But it's just a fact of life in KZN racing going forward that of the total number of races run in any calendar year, approximately half are going to be on the poly track. On the poly track, well, that's what it was there for in the first place, yeah. So Absolutely. There's yeah. this thought in some people's minds that it's there to race when it rains. Um, it obviously performs very well when it rains, and we 
haven't lost a single race meeting this year other than the one that we lost at Scottsville when we were already we committed to anyway. we couldn't change at that last minute. Uh, but but it's very much an integral part of the racing setup right, in so KZN it's, going it's forward. It's basically up to the trainers to, to train around the program. Well, how, you know, how, how early does the program come out? Does it give trainers off? Absolutely. We've just printed the, pub, uh, the program to the end of July. Um, but, uh, you know, so thereafter we'll go from August until we'd, we'd like to do programs three, between four and six months at a right, time. Right. Uh, but the principle is what needs to be understood here. Yeah. The principle is that approximately half of the races annually run on KZN will be run on the poly track. Right. So if you're looking for a turf only option, then your choices are going to be very limited going forward. Right. So, so it's, it's, a, it's a tough call for, for you and Jay to, to actually Absolutely. program. Absolutely. You know, so we're taking a lot of calls. Uh, we, they want more turf racing, etc. Uh, I, I don't see the difference, to be honest with you, uh, but uh, I imagine the situation is the same in Port Elizabeth, uh, you know, that Arlington's closed and I'm not sure what the percentages are down there, but obviously one, uh, a lot of their racing will be on the poly track and, and a lot of our racing. So, and I think going forward, it's, it's quite possible that we'll see a poly track introduced in Gauteng as well. So, you know, I, I can't speak on their behalf, but certainly I'd be surprised if somewhere along the way that didn't happen. That didn't happen, yeah. Um, yeah, okay, that's uh, the poly track handled. And, and uh, I believe we've got a whole slew of trainers coming in for the champion season, of all the usual suspects. Yeah, well, we're looking forward to champion season with a great deal of excitement. We've just released the champion season brochure, which is out there for all to see. It's a, it's a, it's a brochure that's produced along international lines. When the, we, we believe the champion season is one of the great racing carnivals of the world. It's May, June and July. Sort of gets off unofficially during April uh, with a few uh, with a few preparatory features, but we recognise, of course, that April's the focus of top quality racing is on the high felt, culminating with the President's Champions Challenge and the Derby at the end of April. So our season officially kicks off uh, on the first of May, uh, well, the first Saturday of May, with the KRA Guineas Day and the Drill Hall Stakes. And it's encouraging to note that uh, you know most of the Cape Town guys used to always used to love to come to Clarewood. The notable exception was Brett Crawford, who insisted on going to Summerfeld. Perhaps he was looking into the future. And there's certainly nothing wrong with the way Brett Crawford has performed here during the champion season over the last two years. But Brett has got 20 stables at Summerfeld this year. Justin Snaith has got 20 stables. Mike Bass, Dean Canamere, Joey Ramsden, Stan Ellie's back with a few stables. And it's encouraging also to see from the high felt, we've got a couple of youngsters coming through or newish trainers. Paul Peters bringing a, a very strong string of 20 horses. That's the first for him. And he'll That's the first for him, and he'll go to Sommerfeld. Johan Janssen van Furen will join Waiho Mowing at Ashburton. Waiho is already uh, you know, well and it's truly ensconced really there and having tremendous success. Three runners yesterday, three winners. And Alec Laird is booked to go to Sommerfeld. So we're looking forward to a very competitive uh, 2015 champion. So Sommerfeld geared for all the extra horses. Well, it's obviously going to, uh, it's going to be interesting, uh, but it's, uh, we're very encouraged by the manner in which the Clarewood trainers have settled in to, to Sommerfeld. If one thinks about uh, Dennis Bosch has had, has had a wonderful run. Garth's had his fair share of winners, Charles is ticking them over, etc. Uh, so for a lot of these Cape trainers, going to, to Sommerfeld is going to be a new experience. But uh, the spirit at Sommerfeld is extremely good. Tony's done a wonderful job together with Velassen in, in blending everybody together. Um, it's obviously going to be a very crowded Sommerfeld for champion season, but the trainers have a wonderful way of working with each other and uh, to ensure that the horses get uh, the very best opportunity to be prepared for the various it's races. It's just a case of communicating with people yeah. and, and, and yeah, organizing, Absolutely. organizing Absolutely. your time. Yeah. So we're looking forward to welcoming all these trainers back uh, for, uh, for champion season. Right. And obviously uh, we launched champion season on the 16th of April. Uh, when we announced the first entries for the Vodacom Derb in July. But uh, as you were speaking to, to Warren a bit earlier than that, that's the day before the 2020 race meeting. I'm pleased to say that we've got the full support of the trainers because they're the ones that are going to be on a, under pressure to ensure we race every 20 well, minutes. You better, as are the, you better put an alarm clock in the way. As are the stipendary stewards. No objections that night, please. Um, that's a tongue-in-cheek comment because obviously we expect clean racing and racing according to the rules. But it's going to be something that I think we're going to find very exciting. But I'm really looking forward to the Interprovincial Challenge coming back under the name of the Ryder Cup. Uh, I think it's going to really boost Mercury Sprint Race Day on the 18th of July. That fits perfectly between 
the Vodacom Durban July on the first Saturday yeah, of Mercury July. Mercury always used to be sort of stuck in, in, in the middle because those two well, big race meetings. Well, that's so exactly right, Andrew. Give it a bit so of a punch. He has, a, he has an opportunity to, you know, between the Vodacom Durban July and Super Saturday to take the Mercury Sprint Race Day, which used to be run at Clarewood, of course, comes to Gravel. Uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing uh, 12 of the country's top jockeys. If you think about... For example, these not necessarily the teams because we're going to be guided by the log at the end of June. But if you think about the high fault, you think about Samunga, Pierre Stratum, Gavin Larina, uh, together with uh, whom I'm missing, Washong Mowing, Mowing, for example, coming head to head with NKZN, Musi Yeni, Sean Cormack, Anthony Delpesh, and Anton Marcus, and Bernard Faye Derb from Cape Town, along with Richard Faree and Greg Sheen and Carl Nicias and Grant Nikek. Put all of those guys into one cauldron for the afternoon uh, with, with something meaningful at stake, uh, uh, mainly pride. And we, we, we're running a public competition to, to name the franchises. We obviously can't go with dolphins and sharks and all of those sort of names. So we're going to run a public competition to try and give them names. Uh, as far as the colours are concerned, we're going to stay with the, uh, with the owner's silks, uh, but each team will have their own colour cap. So watching really the race, idea. you can see all the blue caps would be Western Province, for example. The gold caps will be uh, Gauteng, Gauteng. Heifelt, and Heifelt, and the black caps would be... So from a viewing perspective, you can follow what's happening, but retaining the, the yeah, owner's silks silk. so that it becomes a mix and match of, of owner's silks right, and colours right. as well. So I'm really looking forward to that. And of course, early in April, we've got the Easter Dash Easter over dash, 600 yes. metres. That goes to Scottsville this year. Oh, right. Yeah, we, uh, yeah but it's the only straight course that you've got there. So uh, it'll be very interesting. I think you should make it a 400 metre dash. Well, funny enough, you should say that. You know, uh, we started the 600 metre race uh, three years ago. I, I tried it in Joburg very successfully. And again, you know, Andrew, it's, we've got to break out of our mould. We've got to have a bit of fun while box, we're racing yeah. as well. And uh, it can't be the same old, same old, same old. Even with champion season, you've got to find new things that you're going to be doing and uh, to beef it all up and make it more exciting and add a few things. And we've got a number of ideas for Vodacom Durban July Day, which I'm not at liberty to talk about at this early stage, uh, to beef up that day as well. We're continuously focusing on how we can make the day at the races more attractive, uh, more comfortable, more enjoyable, more secure, etc. Uh, making sure that our service uh, levels are in place. But... I really enjoy that uh, little sprint, and I agree with you. I think from next year, we've already advertised it for 600 metres. Maybe, maybe 500 metres is, is just to shorten it, to, to, to make it a real speed why don't, why don't you make it 500 metres and then invite the quarter horse blokes to come along? We have quarter Do we have quarter horses Europe. in South Africa? Oh, yes, there is. A, I, I, I try to approach them to see if we could maybe get them onto, onto gravel. You know, we were always looking for something to, to fill in between races. I thought maybe quarter horse racing, but they never came back to me, so I don't know. All right, well, we, maybe we make an effort to get back in, in, in so touch with the Quarter Horse Society quarter horse. And, because it'll be interesting to race a Quarter Horse against a thoroughbred over 400 metres. That'd be very interesting. Yeah, that would be interesting. So step. there's a lot to look forward to. Obviously, as we said, uh, before we get to, to all of that, uh, I'm really looking forward to the rest of the Highfelt season. I think there's been already some very exciting quality racing. I'm looking forward to seeing Majmu reappear um, at in the, in, this, in the second leg of the, of the triple tiara um, and, and obviously seeing Harry Sun, uh, how he handles uh, the classic, it will be great for Paul to win that race again, he won it a couple of years back, so there's lots of quality racing to come before we get into champion season. Uh, also, also the champion season I'm looking forward to because it appears that, that legislated future uh, their, their overseas campaigns are on hold, so we might, we might see them again in the in the July, although uh, I see Justin Smith sort of hedging his bets as far as the July goes. Well, I guess it depends on ratings, but what is encouraging is that uh, certainly in terms of the early information we've had from those trainers, because we do ask them to provide us with a provisional list of their horses that they are bringing to KwaZulu Natal for champion season, and of course both Legislate and Futura are, are penciled in, but uh, you know there's a lot of water to flow under the bridge before we get to that stage, uh, but it'll be fantastic to welcome back the Vodacom Durban July defending champion legislate and horse of the year legislate. Even if he chooses not to go for the Vodacom Durban July, he may well go the wait for age route, which is well, obviously the drill hall yeah. stakes into the Rising Sun Gold Challenge, which this year will be run um, at Gravel. And then obviously the Champions Cup at the end of the season on Super Saturday is, is not a handicap. 
So that may be uh, quite appealing for them. That's a race that Futura won so, yeah, so last there, There's plenty on the program for the, for the two horses where they, they could possibly meet. So, so where they could meet and they could also avoid each other. Hopefully they take the bit and, and, and go for it. Yeah. yeah. No, it's, it's, uh, you know, it is the national championships of South African racing. Uh, many of the Equus Award winners are decided here in KwaZulu-Natal during the months, not all of them, but many of them uh, during the months of May, June and July. Uh, the racing fans, they love this time of the year, and I think uh, wherever you're racing from. Uh, so um, we, we, we've done our very best to ensure that the, that the turf tracks uh, this year, we're fully aware and acknowledge uh, that the criticism that we, that we received last year for the state of the grass tracks was well-founded, well-justified. Uh, we were going through that phase of development um, and basically Gravel at that time was a construction site. We have no excuses this year. Uh, we're going to present the grass tracks in as good a condition as they've ever been for champion season. In fact, better than they've ever been. And, uh, and, and that will just contribute, I think, to quality racing. Yes, Graham, just generally speaking, I mean, being in, in all the meetings that we've had so far, it, everybody's sort of pulled together. They've brought new ideas, uh, new concepts, and I think this, this season could really be a real cracker for four. Well, we're going to have, obviously, the racing app, which uh, Glenn and Brendan put together, is flying. Uh, we've got a new, new website coming, a new champion season website coming. So we, we're embracing social media to the extent that we can. We've got a few new ideas that have sort of made Gravel the place to be on a Friday night, especially. There's been a great buzz, and that's been very, very encouraging for us as well. Uh, we intend to have the Galloping Gourmet Beer and Braai Festival uh, at KRA Guineas Day on Daily News Day and also on Super Saturday. We've been working quite closely with Elan, who are on board with us here, and Alan Fells and his team. They quite, uh, they're quite uh, innovative uh, on Daily News Day. It looks like we're going to have a massive stretch of stuff car show here. Uh, but you'll read all about that in the media to come. In between race meetings, they're going to put a dining room table out there on the 27th of April to, to serve 1,300 people at one time to break the Guinness World Book of uh, the, the Guinness World Record for the longest dining table right here at Gravel. So it's a pleasure working with those guys, you know, because they come with a whole different slew of ideas uh, that sit outside of racing, and we find ways to connect how we could connect racing right. to some. Right. We had a fantastic evening here the other night, the 27th, that was uh, the Philharmonic Orchestra up on the Silver Ring playing during the racing. It was just a fantastic evening. So a lot of those ideas are going to start to filter through. And for me, it's about making uh, the sport of horse racing more enjoyable for more people. For more people, right, with all the, the side shows. Uh, anything else, Graham? No, I think that's about it. Eh? We, uh, as I said, we're a couple of weeks away from the unofficial start of the season, which uh, the curtain raises start on the 1st of April. But uh, yeah, just uh, around the corner, and we'll have the first uh, list of entries for the Vodacom Durban July out, and, and then we're up and running. But obviously, behind the scenes, lots of prep meetings already happening to ensure that all of the events through champion season go off uh, without a hitch. Right, Graham, thanks for coming on to the show. And uh, in closing... Uh, the new Parade magazine goes to print this week, so uh, keep an eye on your post box. Uh, thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the evening.